How are you, my fans, sneak peepers, and curious friends? I am difficult and demanding. If you want to know my real name, then hold still, and I might bring your wish to fruition. Before we begin, you can find this podcast show in iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Blueberry, Google Play Music, TuneIn, YouTube, and Stitcher. This is the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real, uncensored, and shooting straight between the eyes, the third eye that is. I am going to hit you with explicit truth. This solo show is outrageously honest and keenly witty with a view into life. Yes, I said life. That's what we do every day when we wake up from sleeping. We are living life. Well, some of us at least. Let's get something straight. Really, really straight. I am truly, actually, habitually, and shamelessly difficult and demanding. And I completely own it. Now, I don't ask for much because I expect and receive it all. I firmly believe that if you expect shit, you will receive shit. What does that mean? Well, it means expect nothing but the best and don't settle for less. As always, I, your host, Tara, am keeping it real and uncensored. How long did you think you could stay away from me? I have to commend you for trying, but you must know and understand I am a force to be reckoned with. So save your time and energy and just surrender to me. My world is the only world, so unplug from your life and dive all into episode 60 of the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast. Are you having less sex? Why is that? How is that? Are you masturbating too much and killing your desire? Are you disinterested because the people you're hooking up with are duds? Is the real reason because you're scared and sexually awkward? Why are you withdrawing from physical intimacy? All you need is the right one to caress you, lick you, kiss you, and ride your ass until you explode. The right one will make you so grateful to be alive. Before I begin, I am going to do a call out. What's a call out? Well, it's not a shout out. I am calling out you motherfucking lurkers. If you have entered my world, then be honest with yourself about it. You want to be here, and you know I want you here, so follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Finally, climb aboard and enjoy the entire show, because I am giving you plenty of ridiculous honesty. Once the podcast episode ends, I am keeping it going on my Instagram page at Difficult and Demanding and on my Twitter page at Mrs. D and D. So I read an article and this article was called Why Are People Having So Little Sex? Despite the easing of taboos and the rise of hookup apps, Americans are in the midst of a sex recession. And they said that these times should be boom times because of the easing of taboos and the rise of hookup apps. They said the share of Americans who say sex between unmarried adults is quote unquote not wrong at all is at an all time high. New cases of HIV are at an all time low and most women can at last get birth control for free and the morning after pill without a prescription. And they said that Grinder and Tinder apps offer the prospect of casual sex within the hour. Right. Casual sex within the hour. And they said if something exists, then there must be porn of it. And then you have BDSM at play at local um, theaters. So there's a lot of things that are going on in today's society. And they're sitting here trying to tell us that, you know, sexting is normal. 
shame lighted words like perversion have given way to terms like kink and anal sex has gone from taboo to fifth base. So, so many things have changed. And while we have quote unquote released restrictions and increased our open-mindedness, we are having less sex. That shit seems crazy as hell to me of why we want to have less of that shit unless you don't know what the fuck you're doing or to you with the wrong motherfucker. Do you understand what I said? This shit makes no sense to me. We should be celebrating. I mean, shit, if you can run naked during, uh, through the street, you should and you could or you would or you wouldn't. I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, this doesn't make any sense of why we would be shying away from the opportunity to have love, make, you know, make love, have sex, fuck, whatever you want to call it, hookup. Why would we want to shy away from that shit? That makes no sense to me. Boom times. Actually, when it comes to human beings, there's always some people who are booming and there's always some people who are not. And the question is, why? Why do we have the appearance that um, most people should or should not? I'm like, how do we come up with these parameters of what people should or should not be doing based upon some cultural influences or societal changes? The fact is this. If there are people or most people are having less sex, okay, then that means the social norms or cultural changes that are occurring are happening because of a small, select, influential group of people who are making these things more open and acceptable. Listen to what I'm saying. People in America or in general, for some odd reason, they're very weird when it comes to sex, romance, and intimacy. There's all these rules and guidelines and parameters and do's and don'ts and mostly don'ts about what you should do, when you should do it, how you should do it, and who the fuck you should do it with. So there's always a large chunk of people that struggle with their sexuality and sex. So now that things are changing, you would think that, hmm, more people should be getting a freak on. More people should be freaks. More people should have a higher freak number. But that's not the case. You still got a large group of fucked up people who are reluctant or resistant to enjoy something that's a natural part of life. So if you cut away this group of people, which I have in my mind, it's leading me to a conclusion that the people who are influencing our sexual culture today is a small group of people who are pushing boundaries, expanding minds, experimenting with some shit, and they don't give a fuck about what anybody goddamn thinks. Because the more people are exposed to something, the more they become comfortable with something. And then when there's greater comfort, then there is a relaxation of rules and expectations as far as how people should behave. You got people sending unsolicited dick pics. You got women busting that shit open and sending pictures or creating videos on motherfucking Instagram. You got people sexting. All these other things are going on, but people are having less sex. That blows my motherfucking mind because look, if I can do it every single, if I can do it every moment of every goddamn day, I would be on it like a motherfucking bunny rabbit. That's just me. So I'm trying to understand why is it? That people don't want that. How could you not want that? How do you not want that? How do you not want it? If you don't want that shit as bad as air, water, and food, I can guarantee you, you are doing it with the wrong motherfucker or you don't know what you're doing. You don't understand. When you have the right connection, the ultimate connection, that shit is primal. It is animalistic. I'm not talking about lust. I'm talking about straight, raw, unbridled passion with the right motherfucker. One person can know what they're doing. The other person doesn't know what they're doing. It doesn't goddamn matter. Because when you have the right chemistry, you have the right mix, the sky is the goddamn limit. All you got to do is look at each other and your shit should be purring. So I don't understand how people are not having more sex. 
you'll be like, yay, let's get this shit on. So why is there always a motherfucking problem when it comes to sex and sexuality? I don't understand how something that can feel so good be so wrong for so many people. How something can feel so good and people are not running to strip their ass, butt ass naked to get it on. Like, what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? Because I'm sitting here looking at this shit. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think that people have, people have some social issues. They have some connecting issues. They have some basic borderline personality issues, companionship issues, because that sex, intimacy, romance is one of the best things that we can have as human beings. And people are having less of this shit. This study says that young adults are having less sex. And it's also said that there's a sign, there are signs of a broader withdrawal from physical intimacy with adults. How in the hell can we have a broader withdrawal, which means people have no interest in connecting physically with another motherfucker? Listen to what I said. This article said that there is a a trend, a broader trend of people withdrawing from having physical intimacy with others. Now, the point of having human beings around is that we want to connect. We want to touch. We want to feel. We want to taste. We want to smell. We want to enjoy all of our five senses. Now, why in the world would we be withdrawing from that shit? Something is off. Because if that is naturally the trend, how can anything ever replace the touch of when someone touches you ever so slightly with their finger? How can something replace someone's tongue rubbing against your skin? How can something replace how someone brushes up against you or holds you? You've got to tell me what the fuck there is that can replace the electricity, the connection that you get from being close and intimate with the right person. How is there a replacement? How can something replace that shit? It's not possible. But we're going to go on. We're going to keep talking. They said there are many theories about what is causing the sex recession. They think it's because of the hookup culture that's going on, economic pressures, uh, pressures, people's anxiety issues, people's psychological frailty, um, people taking antidepressant, antidepressant medications, people streaming too much TV, too much digital porn. It's the golden age of vibrators. It's fucking dating apps. I mean, shit. How about this? It's breathing. Eating, shitting, and pissing also the reason? The fact is this. People are coming up with whatever the fuck they can come up with to justify some fundamental baseline shit. People are goddamn off. You gotta be off. You gotta be off in the motherfucking head, mind, the head, the mind, and the heart to not want to connect with another person. What happened to the days where someone, you look at someone, they give you butterflies? What happened to the days where you make eye contact with the motherfucker and all of a sudden your ass is fucking dripping, pouring wet? Like, what happened to that shit? Like, where the fuck are we that you don't have that connection, that electricity? That is what gives you life. That is what makes people want to be attracted to you, to ask you out, to come to you. If you don't have that spark, your ass is just as good as dead. Where's your spark? Where's your vibrancy? Where's your vitality? Where's that mm, that you have to make a motherfucker that want to come up and ask you to fuck out and take you on a spectacular day? Where's that shit? Huh? Where is that? How can you let that go? That is your essence. That is your being. That is who you are. That is your goddamn sex appeal. How are you going to lose your motherfucking sex appeal? You got to be in tune with that animal within you. Now, if y'all haven't figured this shit out, I'm a goddamn tigress. 
a ferocious one. I will eat your motherfucking ass alive. I will eat you, spit you the fuck out, eat you again, spit you the fuck out. And did I mention I will eat your ass and spit you the fuck out again? You don't want to come for me. You don't want to come looking for me. Because if you come looking for me, your ass better motherfucking bring it. You got to bring it. And to bring it, you got to know what the fuck you're doing. So if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, don't come to me. Like I said, I will eat your ass ass alive and i will keep doing so i will eat your ass to the fucking bone i won't leave anything on the bone and then it will grow back and i will finish you again it will grow back and i will finish you again you don't want to come this way because unlike most of y'all motherfuckers i know me i know my sex appeal i know how the fuck i am i know what the fuck i want i know where the fuck to get it i know how to get it and i know i'm going to get that shit what about you what about you you don't know, do you? Y'all have a tendency not to know a lot of shit. That's what I can say. But sex, shit, you can't walk away from that. You can, If you do that shit right, man, that shit should stay the fuck with you. If you're doing it with someone and you have forgotten about that shit, you're fucking with the wrong person. The right person should blow your motherfucking ass inside out. They should turn you the fuck out. Out. And if you are fucking with people who cannot turn you to fuck out, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. You got to weed through the fucking bums and scrubs and get to the gym that can teach you some new shit. Y'all doing some basic shit. Basic shit, mediocre room temper bullshit will get you not wanting to have sex or intimacy with someone. And you know what? If you're with someone who can't bring it, guess what you do? You bring the heat. You bring the fire. You turn their motherfucking inside out. You shock treatment their goddamn ass. If you're with a motherfucker who doesn't know what they're doing, guess what? You like them enough. You're attracted to them enough. You turn their ass out. You do circus Olay tricks on their fucking ass and make them go, make them go blind, crippled, and crazy by the time you're fucking done with them. That's what you need to do. You need to bring that shit. How are you gonna be fucking with people and y'all looking at each other like tick, like you wanna play tic tac toe? Fuck tic tac toe. You need to explore. You need to be curious. You need to be adventurous. You got to fucking bring it. If you don't know what the fuck you're doing, do some research. And I'm not saying you got to watch fucking porn videos all day, but explore intimacy, the different parts of the human body. Find out different things you can do. And and you got to open your motherfucking mind. You got to do your homework. How are we sitting around blaming any and everything for our fucked up libidos? You got to take charge of libidos. It's like your fucking appetite. When you're hungry, you eat, right? Most of you motherfuckers, if you're hungry, you eat. If you're tired, you sleep. If you're broke, you get some money. Well, then you got to take care of your libido so you can get some fucking honey. Your libido is something that... It needs to be stoked. It needs to be cultivated. It needs to be acknowledged. It needs to be appreciated. It needs to be listened to. Y'all motherfuckers just think this shit just grows on trees and you can just pluck it and it all comes back. No. No, 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 no. You have to understand that your libido is something special. It's something special and you have to treat it as special. You just think, oh, my libido's low. You know what? Fuck it. No big deal. This is how I am. This is how I'm wired. This is how I'm going to be. And you know what? Then I'm not going to pursue it. No. If you think you like sex and if you believe that there's something better, then guess what? There is something better. You just got to find the shit. But how are you going to identify it? How are you going to identify something better if you haven't done your research, if you haven't looked into what you are, what you're curious about, what you may or may not want to try? You got to be open minded. It's like going to fucking school. The only difference is most places, there's not a school for libidos. There's not a school for sexuality. There's not a school for sex. You got to go out trial and error. And when you're doing trial and error, you got to make sure your ass don't catch any fucking scratchy diseases and fall dead. You got to be careful. But You got to have conversations. You have to talk. You have to know yourself. You have to know yourself. So here's the issue. There's clearly a problem with people developing a bond, a connection, some form of intimacy. There has to be. 
Because if there's not some void or disconnect, we should be running towards one another because touch, sex, intimacy, all that is healing. It relieves stress. It gives you a glow and makes you flow through life much better. So if people are feeling less inclined to have that aspect of their life, it's leading me to believe that people are getting stressed about the unexpected demands of real world relationships because we live in this virtual alternate reality we can't handle real world relationships and real world relationships require some fucking work and people are less enticed by that people would rather be lured into a virtual reality in regards to the libido a virtual reality so people want to have a video game type of sexual experience, which means another human being is not there with them. Or if another human being is there, they're not touching, they're not connecting. It's kind of disconnected. For example, in Japan, Japan has shops that allow men to pay to masturbate while female employees watch. This is what the fuck I said. In Japan, there are shops, stores, businesses that allow men, okay, to pay to have female employees watch them masturbate. That shit seems off as fucking hell. Why you want to have someone watch and said have someone do that shit for you? Why, what, why do you want to have someone watch? Okay, let's say she watches initially. But you don't want her to join in? You don't want her to touch you? Do y'all motherfuckers know what a real woman's touch is like? And do you other people know what a real man's touch is like? Do y'all know? Because if you knew, you would say, uh-uh, bring your motherfucking ass over here. Fuck this shit. Bring it to me. Touch me. Come to me right here now, motherfucker. Come here. Bring it now. That's what you would say. How can you sit there, whack your shit off, and have someone sit there and watch you, and you don't want her to touch you? You don't want her to taste you. You don't want her to smell you. What the fuck is this shit? There is some next level things out there that you can't even begin to understand when it comes to interacting with a human being. You want her to watch? Okay, she watched. You finished off. But you don't understand the point of sex and intimacy is to take it to the next level. Masturbation, it's great. It feels good. You know what you're doing. There's no work. There's no figuring it out. You got yourself. You got it. You good. But that's one dimensional. It's very restricted. It's very limited. And to be honest with you, it's not as fulfilling. Yes, it feels good. Yes, you climax. You orgasm. But it's hollow. It's incomplete. Because you're missing your fucking counterpart. If you're a male and you're attracted to female, you're missing that energy. If you're a male attracted to male, you're missing that energy. Whatever it is, you always need your counterpart because that's adding fuel to the fucking fire. When you're doing it by yourself, continuously, with only you and your thoughts, that starts to warp your reality. It starts to warp your ability to energetically, spiritually connect with another. It fucks you up. Now, I'm not saying masturbation is bad. I'm saying masturbation is cool, is good, is great. But with anything, you have to have fucking balance. Masturbation cannot and should not replace you being physically physical with another living, breathing, warm body person. It will never feel the same. There is nothing that you can do by yourself that will replace having the right motherfucker with you, lying with you. Whether you be on the floor, on the fucking counter, in bed, in the bathroom, in the back of a car, wherever the fuck you want to do it, nothing will ever replace having another living, breathing, warm body person there with you. You don't believe me? I don't give a fuck because I know what I'm saying is true. When you get used 
to whacking your shit off, whether you're male or female. And you use that as a lame ass excuse of I've climaxed, I'm good. Why would you ever motherfucking settle? Why would you settle? Why would you sacrifice when there's somebody who can blow your motherfucking brains out of your goddamn head? Put the shit back and do it over and over and over and over and over again. Why would you ever deprive yourself of that, huh? I'm telling you guys, you are not with the right goddamn people. I've created an episode. I don't even know what the hell it is, but if you want to know which one I'm talking about, I can look that shit up and tell you. There are many different levels to human beings connecting. You have the physical, you have the mental, you have the emotional, and you have the spiritual. The more connections that you have with the person, the more powerful your passion, your intimacy becomes. When you can have the mental, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual attraction, Shit is going off like goddamn fucking firecrackers. Like you don't understand what the fuck that is like. You can look at each other and your world starts going the fuck off and you haven't even touched each other yet. See, the problem is our connections are one level. They're one dimensional. And that is why masturbation is sufficient for a number of you people because you are going off of a physical attraction or you're just going off an emotional attraction. No, when you give your body to another, you want to make sure that you have the utmost, the highest goddamn connection. You want to eat that motherfucker alive. What does that mean? You want to enjoy every part of them. Every part of them is sexually pleasing. You want to explore. You want to know. You want more. You want more. You want more. And did I motherfucking mention you want more? If you don't want more, you're sleeping with the wrong goddamn people. Because when you're with the right one, and I'm not talking about lust. This is something deeper and beyond that. I'm talking about a connection, the ultimate connection with a person that there is no other. There is nothing like it. It is unique. It is magnetic. It is fucking powerful. And it's goddamn mind blowing. Mind blowing. And most of y'all don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But one thing you do know what I'm talking about is this. If you would rather masturbate than be with the person that you are in a relationship with, or if you would rather masturbate than date and go out and meet people, what that's telling me is you don't know how to find the right people to be in your life. The best pieces of advice I can give you when you're dealing with people is look for the spiritual connection first. Look for that connection that makes you fucking just jump, just jolt out of your skin. That you feel that that person gets you and you connect. And then you look for the emotional, the mental, and the physical. That is the most gratifying intimacy and passion that you could ever receive in your life. But let's get back to Japan. Men are paying to masturbate while females employee watch. I'm sure there's some kink to it. I'm sure there's some fantasy to it. But if he would have a connection with her and allow her to help him. They can do the shit together, whatever. He would be addicted to some next level shit. Next level shit. Young people see the idea of intercourse as tiresome. Y'all are some lazy son of a bitches. Okay, some, seriously, some lazy son of a bitches. It's supposed to be a dance. It's a process. It's a journey. It's not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's not an end goal. It's, it's a journey, intimacy and sex. And I think that's what people are missing. You're so used to this instant gratification of swiping left, swiping right, liking, unliking, and all that shit that you don't understand. When it comes to human beings, you got to connect. You got the flow. Nothing in nature just a pop pops up and appears like that. No, it takes time to build, to grow, get momentum. Even with a car's engine to go from zero to 60, there's some steps that have to happen in between. So if you want to get from zero to 60 in a minute, you got to put the work in. So why would you not want to put the work in 
on seeing the power of how you can make someone moan and groan. Why would you not put the work in to see how you make someone shiver and tremor? Why would you not want to put the work in to see that, okay, I can make that motherfucker come over and over and over. And did I mention over again? Why wouldn't you want to see that shit? That's some ego boosting shit. That's some self-esteem enhancing shit. And you feel good while you're doing it. Why would you deprive yourself of some shit like that? Like, come on, people. How can a fucking phone and swiping left and right compare to knowing that I got the power to make someone want to climb up the fucking walls and hang off the goddamn ceiling? Why would you turn that away? Why, why would you walk away from that shit? Knowing you could see how you make someone fucking melt or you make them wet as hell. Why in the fuck would you walk away from that? Huh? That makes some fucking sense to me. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you should find the fuck out what I'm talking about. Don't deprive yourself of an opportunity or an experience because you're fucking lazy. At least try it. Try to achieve as far as you can on that journey of having intimacy with another. And then decide, this shit is tiresome. This shit is bothersome for me. So you know what? I'm going to go off paying motherfuckers to watch me masturbate my motherfucking self. Find out before you deprive yourself. That's all I'm asking. They said services that make masturbation happen are, are more enjoyable are booming. So yeah, that's what the fuck they're doing in Japan. Japan are teaching people how to jerk the fuck off by themselves. That's the business. We went from wanting to be with others to looking at motherfuckers to, you know, fuck this shit, I'm gonna whack myself off and they are making money off of this. They actually have something. It is a single use. This is in Japan. A single use silicone egg that men feel fill with a lubricant and masturbate with it inside. Okay, yeah, listen to what the fuck I said. You have some plastic shit, which means it is fake. It is not real. It is meant to feel like a motherfucking coochie or vagina. But you and I both know there's no replacement for the real goddamn thing. Just like a, a like a vibrator cannot replace a dick. A silicone egg cannot replace a woman. Now, I know y'all like to think that it's the case. No, nothing is the same as the real goddamn thing. But hey, I'm biased. What the fuck do I know? Or what the fuck do you know? Somebody in this mix don't know some shit and I'm leaning towards you not knowing what the fuck is going on. But moving on. So it's a silicone egg that's used for one time that's filled with the lubricant and the guy masturbates inside of this egg. A person that was traveling in Japan actually picked this shit up from a convenience store and he headed back to his hotel and he gave the silicone egg a go. He said the silicone egg, it was, drum roll, drum roll, you ready for it? Are you ready for it? He says the silicone egg was cold and fucking awkward. Yes, cold and awkward. Guess who else is cold and awkward? The motherfuckers who are buying those eggs. Because real motherfuckers don't want something that's cold and goddamn awkward. Yes, being with another person, getting used to them, finding your rhythm, finding your flow can cause you to get some awkward moments, to be impatient, you feel self-conscious, whatever. That's a part of being a human being. That's a part of embracing yourself, getting to know yourself. And um, it's a part of life. It's a journey part of life. But he said, cold and awkward. He didn't like it, but he said he understands its purpose. He said it's a way to avoid putting yourself out there and having an actual experience with another person. Now there you motherfucking go. Here's someone with some goddamn sense. It's an excuse not to deal with you feeling insecure it's an excuse for you having low self-esteem. It's an excuse or way to hide your social awkwardness. It's an excuse not to explore and see all that life has to offer. It's an excuse to be a one-dimensional fucking numb-nut robotic-ass person living on the face of this earth. We have so much more to offer ourselves and the world why or when has it been become okay to deprive yourself? 
why and when did it become okay to come up with fucking pussyfoot half-ass excuses of why you're not living your life to the fullest when did it be, become okay to use anything from a fucking spinach stuck in your teeth to fucking bad breath or a hangnail as an excuse to not get the fuck out there and enjoy life that is why so many people are lonely. That's why so many people have anxiety. That's why so many people are antidepressants. And that's why so many motherfucking people, did I mention, are unhappy. You're unhappy because you need connections. You're unhappy that you're not being touched. You need touch. You need the touch of another breathing human being. That's a part of our life force. That's a part of vitality. We need that to be healthy and alive. When you deprive yourself of that, you basically become an orphan. Children who not who have not been hugged and held on to, they develop socially limited. They have some awkwardness that they have to overcome. Touch is a part of what we need as a human being. And because of technology and the convenience of everything else around, we are coming up with ingenious ways to take shortcuts. We're coming up with short-term solutions that make long-term problems bigger. If you have not been touched in a loving, seductive manner, that means you have the wrong people in your motherfucking life. Touch is healing Love is healing. Intimacy is healing. Romance is healing. And a motherfucking orgasm, that shit will give you new life. That would add years back onto your motherfucking life if it's the right type of orgasm, which means you have many different connections with the person. It's just not physical. When you only have a physical connection, which means you are attracted to that person, you may come climax or not, but you will always leave that moment that situation feeling hollow depleted feeling like what the fuck was that and possibly looking for another person because what you received what you went through wasn't fulfilling that's the problem they said the number of people masturbating has grown and half of adults women use vibrators look look i don't have a problem with vibrators if you want it, use it. But let me tell you something. When you get used to using a vibrator all the time, it kind of distorts your reality. It's like someone watching porn all the time. You get, your reality gets altered. Your expectations become skewed. And your ability to connect with a real human being that's not performing for a movie it becomes off the, 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 the temperature, the texture, the speed, the intensity of a vibrator can never be matched by a human being. So if you are conditioning your body to fucking come a climax off of a vibrator, I can guarantee you 9.8 times out of 10, it's going to be very difficult for you to climax when you are with whoever you like another male or female. Because they're not going to be able to give the same intensity, pressure, speed, and vibration. So if you are using dildos, vibrators, and all that shit all the time, and you're worrying about why you can't come, you can't come because you have basically fucked your shit up and made it difficult for your body to enjoy the subtle textures, temperatures, and speed of what a human being gives. I'm not saying vibrators and dildos are wrong. No. Special occasions, every once in a while, but you never want to mess up your body or rhythm or its ability to connect and enjoy what you get from another person. A human cannot compete with a goddamn machine, a tool, and a tool cannot compete with a human. But if you can maintain some type of balance and maintain some type of understanding that, you know what, maybe I need to use my vibrator dildo less so that when I meet someone who I want to be with, whether you want to make love, fuck, hook up, whatever you want to call it, you want to make sure that you can make the most of the situation and not have in the back of your head, shit, I wish I had my dildo. 
fuck, where's my goddamn vibrator? This person is not giving me the intensity speed I want. You don't want to do that because that is a fucking slippery slope. And once you start falling down that fucking slippery slope, slippery slope, that's a goddamn avalanche. You can't come back. Then you have to recondition your body to get used to something else, which means you have to go cold turkey. We need balanced people. It's okay to have variety, but we need balance. And what is the most balance you need to have is sticking to being physically intimate, connecting with a human being that you have as many connections with as possible, not just physical. The ultimate is spiritual, mental, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. But you should have at least two, ideally three, and fucking perfection is at four, having all. But you need at least two. And most of you guys are going off the physical, which is why you're hooking up and that's why your shit is getting fucked up. It is said that pornography and masturbation are making millennials not even want to pursue relationships. Yes, because they don't understand because they're so used to instant gratification. They find it cumbersome to engage with the person. They have more intimacy with their motherfucking phones than they have with another person. They would rather text than talk face to face. They would rather send a DM than engage with the person. And that is why their reality is skewed. Because with people, things don't go as planned. You got to be patient. You may get frustrated. You may get disappointed. You may get surprised. And when you deal with social media and your phone all the time, that takes away all those different sensations. So when you're not used to feeling like a human being, mentally, emotionally, and physically, yeah, real relationships are cumbersome. They're not worth your time. Why? You can get, you can get what you need like that. Pornography, turn it on, whack it off, you're done. Vibrator, turn it on, whack it off, you're done. How long it takes? But with a person, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some investment. It's going to take some stoking, some stroking, some licking, and a whole bunch of other stuff to get shit going. And people don't want to enjoy the foreplay. That's the best part. Seeing how your body moves, how your body reacts, what a person can do. Some person can teach you some shit that you didn't even know. You're like, damn, what the fuck was that? And where the fuck have you been all my goddamn life? Motherfucker, get over here. You ain't going nowhere. Get the fuck over here. Get the fuck over here. Your ass is staying here. You won't know that. Because you are too busy whacking it off and fucking vibrating. They said too much porn may cause over masturbation and take the edge off of people's desire. Yes. Yes. Unless you have a high motherfucking libido, which most people do not. Or you have the right person that gets your shit purring and going. When you're masturbating all the time, you don't have any desire. You're good. And that is also a slippery slope because you're masturbating. It's taking the edge off. You can go to doing whatever you want to do. I guess it's more efficient and it, it saves you time, but it's not helping you on the law over the long run. You're aging faster. You're not healthy as you can be. And it's just not the same. So your quick fix solutions are actually fucking your shit up on the long term. If you haven't found the right one, then I suggest you keep looking before you give up. And how do you know it's the right one? You can tell from the look in the eyes. You can tell from how you touch. You can tell by how you kiss. You don't have to go all the way to tell that the connection's right. It should not be forced. It should just flow. It should go. If it's not flowing or going to the best of reasonable possibilities, because you are two human beings and you're getting to know each other, then you stop that shit and you say thank you for your time, good night, and you find some motherfucking body else. Don't give away your goods to a motherfucking peasant, someone who are not worthy of you. You want to find the right one. You want to find someone who gives the biggest smile on your face and you replay that shit over and over again and you remember every moment. You remember every sensation. You remember that shit like it's right here happening now. If you cannot do that, you are fucking with the wrong goddamn people. Did you get it? Fucking with the wrong people. 
Stop masturbating so much so you build up some desire, you build up your libido, you build up your passion. So when you meet the right person, you give off the right signals and both of you people can claw and tear each other apart. Then you can smile and determine if you want to do it again or you say motherfucking goodbye. But give yourself a chance to build up that energy so you can enjoy it. Stop withering away with these quick fix masturbation. Masturbation is good. It's even better when someone's helped you. It's even better when you don't have to do it at all and you're there with someone else. But who the fuck am I? What the hell do I know? There is a quote that I, that I read. And this quote said, we hook up because we have no social skills. We hook up because we have no social skills. We have no social skills because we hook up. Yes, we have no social skills because we hook up. I'm going to repeat it again. We have no social skills because we hook up. We hook up because we have no social skills. Do you understand what this person's saying to you? Do you understand? I'm going to tell you what it means. What it means is when you keep masturbating or hooking up with people without getting to know them or connecting with them, you are basically cutting your face off and chopping yourself off the goddamn neck. When you lose the ability to connect, to interact, to relate with another person, when you lose the ability to connect with them deeper than skin level, you become weird as hell. You become deadened. You become numb. Your vitality, your sexuality, your chemistry, your magnetism, all that shit starts to dull. It becomes, it becomes mundane. It becomes moot. And then you lose the ability to attract a motherfucker from across the room. You lose the ability to lure a motherfucker to come to you. You lose the ability to make someone motherfucker melt and come in their goddamn shoes. You lose that power of what makes you who you are as a human being. You lose the ability to make someone go wow, motherfucker, wow, wow, bow, wow, wow. Why would you want to lose that? The ultimate confidence booster. When you have the ability to please someone so much that they want to come out their goddamn skin, climb out of their skin because they're over the top with bliss, fulfillment, passion, and joy. Why would you want to walk away from that? And to get that, you need skill, you need experience, you need exposure. But if you're not giving yourself that, yeah, you're coming, you're climaxing, but the shit is lacking, it's lackluster. And the more you do it, the more awkward you become, and the more you are unable to find a proper mate with your, for yourself for now in the future. You won't be able to connect with the person. You will be a living, breathing robot drone. And then you're going to wonder why you're older, why no one's around you, why nothing is happening, why can't you connect, and you feel so lonely. We have to have balance in our life, and we have to realize these short-term fixes, yes, they're fun, they add a little bit of variety. But if you're just hooking up with random people, with no connections, no relationship, no history, no background, no nothing... You are going to shortchange yourself in your life and you won't be able to comprehend what it's like to love and be loved and you won't be able to experience that shit. You are setting yourself up to be alone and lonely in your older years and that's a fucked up way to be when you're old and to be alone. We need people. We need to talk to them. We need to touch them. We need to smell them. We need to see them. We need to hear them. We need to be next to them. We need to feel their warmth. We need all that. And I know you guys like to think that we don't, but no, that's not true. We do need it. They said there's immense pressure to focus on the self at the expense of relationships. Yes, we're so busy trying to get ahead and have success and have all these different activi- activities and to be seen and to be achieving and doing all that, that we're missing the point of life. What is the point of making all your dreams come true if you have no one to share that shit with? What is the point of having everything around you when you're laying in the bed by yourself, touching yourself and fucking a silicone egg or having your plastic ass vibrator? What is the point? You can't talk to it. 
It can't support you. It can't hold you. It won't hug you. It won't call you. It can't take care of you when you're sick. It can't soothe you when you're fucking sad. What? What? You think what? You can go to your DMs, go to your social media account. That's the same thing. No, you people are missing the motherfucking point. You talk about you want community. You talk about what you want connections, but you can't connect with the real live motherfucker in front of your face. You want to send fucking fake ass motherfucking emojis to people like they mean something. They don't mean shit. What you want is someone to touch you and heal you from the inside out. What you want is someone to kiss you, lick you, to bring you the fuck back to life. You want someone to stimulate you, to make you realize how lucky you are to be motherfucking alive. That's what the fuck you want. They said there are a lot of lonely and confused people who have no idea what to do or how to date. Bam. And there you go. Bam. That is what I said. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. All this fucking hooking up and doing all this shit. Eventually you're going to get tired of that. Hopefully you don't get sick. Hopefully you're not dripping some shit or burning with some shit. But the fact is this. Eventually you're going to get tired of hooking up. And then when you get tired of hooking up, guess what the fuck? You're not, you're not going to know what to do and how to do it. You're not going to be able to date. And when you're dating, you're going to be meeting other drone robots like such as yourself. And you're going to realize, what is this? What the fuck is this? This is not enough. I'm not happy. I'm better off being by myself. And that's how the cycle continues. You have to break the cycle. You have to find balance. You have to connect. You have to take the time to cultivate. If you have a garden, you have to cultivate it. You have to grow it. You have to nurture it. You have to tend to it. It's the same with relationships. You just can't put a a seed in a motherfucking dirt and come back 30 minutes later and expect to see a goddamn carrot. That's not life. Life is a journey. It's a process. And so is fucking sex. Foreplay. It's a must. It's a must. It's a build up to the event. It's like having an eight course meal. You don't start with the fucking main course. No, you have an appetizer. Appetizer. You build up to it and you finish off with dessert. Dessert means coming. Coming. Why do you want to go straight to the coming? If you go straight to the coming, you're not going to have the biggest orgasm that you can have. The more you build it, the more you stoke it, you stroke it, the more you just fucking explode. And your body keeps tingling. After that shit is over, your skin is fucking flush. Your heart is fucking racing and pacing and it doesn't go away immediately. Your fucking ass is in euphoria. You're dizzy. You're drunk. You're intoxicated. You're fucking high. You're high. If you're done it right, you're like you are high as fucking hell. And it will last for hours that euphoria if you do it right with the right person. But if you're going straight to dessert coming, no, you're missing out. You're missing out. You're missing out. And I don't know what the fuck to tell you. You are missing the fuck out. They say a lot of women, this article said a lot of women will say privately that they can't believe a guy wants to be down there and likes to eat them out. The woman's these, these women said that this is the ugliest part of my body. That's first of your, that's first of your fucking problems. It's your fucking mindset. You are designed how the fuck you're designed. Your body is what it is. Men are made one way. Women are made another way. It all looks how the fuck is supposed to look. Now with each of us, there's some slight variations due to race, due to genetics, due to age, due to fucking having babies. I mean, shit, what a woman body looks like before having babies will be completely different for the most part after she has a baby. Shit changes. But the fact is, does shit still work? You have to accept the way you're built. Now, if you're going to say this is the ugliest part of my body, I'm trying to figure out what are you comparing that to? What are you comparing that to? You think your treasure box is supposed to look like your fucking face? No, your treasure box is your fucking treasure box because it's your goddamn treasure box and your face is your goddamn face. So who determines it's ugly? Where you get that shit from? Where you get it from? Who determines what the fucking cock is supposed to look like? You could say that shit's ugly too. The fact is we're designed how the fuck we're designed. So when you accept that and get the fuck over that, now you're trying to figure out why does he want to be down there? (laughs) I guess he wants to be down there because he likes to shit. He's finding another way to be in it. It's why he likes it. You can't determine why someone likes some shit. People like what the fuck they like. They want what they want. They love what they love. They need what they need. 
Just because you can't understand why he's there, that's fine. He's there for his own reasons. The question is, why can't you receive what he's willing to give? Why can't you receive what he's willing to give? You're so caught up in how something fucking looks. You should be caught up on getting caught up on someone wanting to please you and give you some different sensations that you never had before. You're worried about the wrong goddamn shit. If he doesn't give a fuck about what it looks like, then guess what? You shouldn't give a fuck either. Simple. If he doesn't care, why should you, should, why should you care? If someone wants to fucking please you, why are you going to turn that shit down? Because you are trying to figure out why the fuck he wants to be down there. He wants to be down there for a reason. And if he keeps coming back, why question? Receive. Say thank you. Say thank you. How difficult is that? He doesn't find it ugly. What one person finds attractive, someone else may find unattractive. Different strokes for different folks. But the fact is this. He likes it. He wants it. He needs it. He wants to go there. Let his ass go there. Maybe if he go there once, he'll never want to go back again. (laughs) Who the fuck knows? But the fact is, he wants to please you. And even if he's not pleasing you, he's pleasing his damn self. And to please him damn self, he's pleasing you. Take the shit. Say thank you. Don't judge yourself. Don't overthink it. Maybe you need the right motherfucker that says, hey, push your leg open, plow his face in, and you don't even know what the fuck hit you and you're caught the fuck off guard. Baby, that's what you need to do. Someone just fucking sneak attack your ass. Just sneak attack and start eating the bush and you don't even know what happened. Maybe that's what you need for you to realize what the fuck you're missing. I don't know. But if a motherfucker wants to please you, make you happy, don't tell him no. You say, come here. You want it? You got it. It is what it is. You want to be there? Take it. This is what it is. And you go from there. Make it simple. Don't make it complicated. They say some women said that receiving oral sex makes them nervous because it feels more intimate than being penetrated and they become so self-conscious that it's difficult to enjoy. Oral sex is more intimate than penetration. Why would that be an issue, intimacy? If someone wants to be that close, that connected to you, that they want to indulge in a way with you that is out of, I don't even know what the fuck you consider norm, but they want to indulge with you in an alternate way to enjoy something that brings them joy. Why would you question that? He's with you because he wants to be with you. He's with you because he knows what a woman's body looks like and feels like. He's with you because that part of you brings him great, great pleasure. And he wants to find another way to enjoy himself, which is not the norm. He's changing things up. He's adding some spice and variety. So why are you overthinking it? If he's not coming up down there dead, then why in the fuck would you question that shit? If he keeps wanting to fucking go down there, let him. What the fuck you got to lose? You got the game more than you have to lose. It's more intimate. What is our problem with being close with another person? What is our problem with connecting with a person? What is a problem with us being vulnerable and open? Because that is how you get the deepest, the longest connections. It's making me wonder what's really going on with us as a society. It's not just about less sex. What it's about is that we're less human. We don't know how to have relationships. We don't know how to be intimate. We don't know how to be open and vulnerable. We don't know how to read our energies and connect with another. And we don't know how to receive love, care, time, and attention. That's what's really going on. Because well-rounded, ba- well-rounded balanced per- people would never turn away the opportunity to feel fucking good. Who turns away that shit? To feel good? No, why would you turn away from that shit? You bust that shit up and you spread eagle. Bam. You want it, you got it. Come eat. That's what the fuck you do. Why are you going to say no? You don't feel clean? Go wash that shit. Go wash it. If you had kids and things don't look the same like they used to, that's true. But if he still wants to go there, then you know what? 
Fuck it. He wants to be there. Let him. Let him. You have to gain more than you have to lose. And the same go for women. You know, some of them don't like to, you know, suck dick. Why? 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 Too big? You'd rather have too big than too motherfucking small. I can guarantee you that. So what's the problem? It seems dirty. Human bodies are dirty. Go watch that shit. What? What is the issue? The human body is designed to be the human body. It is designed to perform the way it's performed. It's designed to do what the fuck it's supposed to do. So why are you overanalyzing this shit? We don't come and pluck in plastic, sterilized wrappers our body. No, this is who we are. How we smell, how we sweat. All that is a part of being a human being. And the more sensual and sexual a person is, they want to explore as many parts of you as possible. When I say as many parts of you as possible, it can be from sucking on your tongue, kissing on your ear, licking your neck, sticking a finger in the ass, whatever that they, sucking on your toes, whatever they come up with. Some people may want two fingers, one in the front, one in the back. Who the fuck knows? Some people want to be sucked and their dick and their fucking balls sucked at the same time. Who the fuck knows? The fact is, people like what they like. And the more sexual people are and the more exploratory they are, you got some people coming up with some shit that you can't even imagine or understand. But the point is, there's somebody for everybody. If someone's too sexually adventurous for you, then you know what? You probably should leave that relationship and find someone who's more tempered down for you. If you are not sexually comfortable with the person that you're with, then I would say you probably shouldn't be in that relationship because you don't want to damper that person. You don't want to water them down. If they're built to fucking rev like a goddamn luxury sports car, why you want them driving around like a fucking Beetle, Volkswagen Beetle? No, that's another thing. We need to fucking stop selling for shit. I understand we fall in love with people and we think they're the best thing since fucking sliced bread. But if you find that you're not sexually compatible and you find that the person is not open, willing to indulging and doing things with you, you enjoy, I would tell you to walk away from that relationship. And you're saying, Tara, how can you say that? I love the person. This person's so good in so many other regards, but it just can't fulfill me this way. Then I would say you are pissing your life away. Why would you settle? That's how you end up cheating. That's how you end up unfulfilled. You want to find someone who you are compatible with on on as many areas as possible. And when I say compatible, I'm not meaning, I'm not saying perfection. But if your sex libido is X and this other person is on the other side of the room, it's not going to work. And if someone's leading you to believe that they can get up to speed with you, that's a fucking lie. We're wired how we're wired. And what usually happens is the person with the higher sex drive or the person who's the freakiest one has to water their shit down to appease the other. I'm too fucking old to be watering any motherfucking thing down. I'm not watering a motherfucking thing down. I am through settling, sacrificing, fucking compromising. Uh Uh-uh. Hell no, I don't motherfucking think so. I believe in fulfillment. On as many different levels as possible. Which means maybe I'm looking for the male version of myself. Who the fuck knows? All I know is this. Fuck that shit. Life is too hard to be settling where we don't need to settle. Sex, intimacy, it relieves stress. It shaves years off our life. It brings us life. It brings us vitality. Why would I want to settle for that? I need to be as happy as possible because life is going to be throwing as many curveballs at me. Why would I deprive myself? Huh? What, it's easier to pick up a bottle, drink a a, a bloody wine bottle? No, it's not easier to do that. I believe in all natural, healthy ways. Let's connect Let's touch, let's taste, let's smell, let's listen, let's use all of our five senses to enjoy life. And if you can get another person that you can connect with, if he wants to eat you front to back, back to front, upside down, top side, it doesn't motherfucking matter. Say thank you. That he desires you so much, has so much passion for you. Say thank you. Get over your hangups. If you have a woman, who wants to suck your fucking dick until your fucking balls fall the fuck off, you know what you tell her? Thank you. Because I can guarantee you, you may not get that shit again. 
and joy. We're too hung up in our heads about what's right, about what's wrong, what looks right, what sounds right. No one can define your sexuality. And no one should know what the fuck you're doing behind closed doors. The only people that matter is the people that are there. So if you get rid of all your judgments and all these stereotypes and all these fucking taboo shit, taboo shit in your head and just sit back and enjoy, go with the flow, live, learn, fucking come. Shit. No one has to know you're a fucking freak. No one has to know you're a motherfucking freak of the week. Actually, freak of the goddamn year. No one has to know that shit. You can put on your goody two-shoe image and act like everything's okay. But behind closed doors, your ass is fucking swinging from the goddamn ceiling, being blindfolded, fucking gagged, hogtied, or whatever the fuck you people are doing, spanking, role-playing, whatever you people are doing, swallowing shit, whatever. You can do all that shit and no one will motherfucking know. That is the good, that is the privilege, a wonderful thing about being in the privacy of your relationship or wherever it is that you're fucking that no one will know. So if you accept the fact that no one knows that you're a fucking freak, what the fuck you got a problem with? He wants to eat, let the fucker eat. He likes to eat it dirty, let the motherfucker eat it dirty. He likes to eat it clean, let his ass eat it clean. He wants to eat it from back to front, let his ass eat it from back to front. Who the fuck matters? If he wants to put one in the pink, one in the goddamn stink, if you like it, he loves it, no one else knows, take that shit, enjoy it. It doesn't fucking matter. He likes to suck toes, dirty toes, clean toes. It doesn't matter. If it feels good, you don't feel harmed, you don't feel disrespected, and you're willing, ready, and able to receive, receive that shit. Receive it. Don't deprive yourself of happiness. Don't deprive yourself of feeling good because you got some fucking hangups in your head. You don't know what life has to offer unless you're open-minded enough to explore and enjoy it. People get into these routines, these mundane type of experiences, and they get stuck in this rut, this same old type of shit in their life. Why you want that boring ass shit? You and I both know you can't eat the same thing for three meals a day every day of your life. So how can you expect your sex life to be like that? And how long you think you can water yourself down? How long you think you can put your sex drive on pause on hold because you have someone else that's not interested? How long you think that shit's going to last? It's not, it's going to last for a while. And then one of you motherfuckers are going to meet somebody who's going to turn your engine the fuck on, get those cobwebs on. And you go like, whoa, where the fuck have I been? And then it's over. Because then you're going to look at all the years, the time that's passed of the things that you missed out that brought you happiness and joy. And you're going to see this new motherfucker. And then you're going to say, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm out. I'm going over there to her. I'm going over there to him. I feel good. I feel alive. I feel like myself. I love you. It's been real. We're done. We're divorced. And you go on to the next person. That's what the fuck happens. We can only play this fucking goody two shoe fake ass bullshit for a certain period of time. And then people start cheating and getting divorced. You cannot deprive yourself. You can only be who the fuck you are. And if you are the freak of the week or you have kinks and fetishes and like to do taboo shit, you got to be true to real to yourself. And the person that you're with, they can't accept that. Your relationship's over. It's over. You just have to decide whether it's going to be over sooner or later. But you can never deprive yourself of who the fuck you really are. Listen to what the hell I said. A lot of you guys, you think that when you're younger, you've done all this freaky, kinky shit and it's out of your system. And now you can live a normal, vanilla, sliced bread type of life. Oh, hell no. That shit doesn't last. It may last for a long time. But then you cross paths. With the right one, the right motherfucker who brings you to life, who awakens what's been asleep and a coma in you. And then once that beast is woken the fuck up, it's on. You can never go back to how you were and you're going to want to make up for lost times. So I suggest y'all think about what I said. Don't deprive yourself. Don't deny yourself. Don't hide yourself. Don't sacrifice yourself. Don't compromise yourself. I understand you love someone, but if you are foregoing a part of you that's near and dear to who and what you are, thinking that this is going to make your relationship work and you can deprive yourself and hide yourself, uh uh, you're going to cheat. You're going to get a divorce. 
and it's going to be real messy later. So save yourself the time, the energy and trouble and honor yourself and be courageous enough to be who you are. Not everyone likes sex. Not everyone likes all that sexuality has to offer. I understand that. There's some people who like most or at all. There's some people who are asexual who don't want that motherfucking thing at all. That's okay. And then the majority of you fall, you know, and the, the, the normal box section, but then you have some other people who come up with some shit that you could never fathom and dream. And if you cross paths with them, one of those people, you're either one lucky son of a bitch, or you are going to be, uh, highly sorely disappointed and disgusted by the shit they come up with. Know yourself, embrace yourself. So you know what the fuck you want, what the fuck you need, and you can avoid things that don't work for you. But if you think you can keep living this one dimensional life with these one dimensional connections and in the end, lose all connection with others and just get yourself off from life. No, you're shortchanging yourself. You're going to be lonely when you're older and when you're ready for a relationship, you're not going to be able to get one because all the parts that made you who you are as a human, you're going to have killed that shit. So I'll speak to you guys next week. Thank you for listening and come back. Are you disappointed this has come to an end? Well, it doesn't have to. Reach out and let me know what you think about this episode and my podcast. You can try and slide into my DM, but I will kick your ass out. So I suggest you hop into my DM on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding or Twitter at Mrs. D and D or leave a comment on one of my posts. Hmm. Now, don't you feel so much better? I am what you needed. Well, let's be really honest. I am the only thing that is needed. The more you resist, the stronger my pull. So accept me in your life and seek me out on Instagram at difficult and demanding and stalk me. Oops, I mean, follow me. (laughs) Episode 61 is here on January 18th, 2019 from the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast.